When learning how to hit a slice for the first time, or a better slice, you need to understand what the slice actually is. A slice is referring to the depth of the shot. Uh, so a drop shot would be at the front of the court, a chip would be mid-court, and a strong slice would be all the way to the back of the court. Okay, And a slice is when the ball has underspin on it. So the tennis ball is spinning backwards like this. That is what gets the ball to kind of slide into the court and stay low. And that is a great reason for using the slice. And there's various other reasons for using the slice as well. But some things that we need to think about when we're learning to hit a better slice or a slice for the first time is that the racket needs to get up high. Okay, I do, not, I do not want to keep the racket too low or set even with the tennis ball. So if I were to bring my racket back like this right here, I could hit a slice. Okay, I could hit underspin on the ball. But what typically will happen when I get in here is the ball bounces about this high, this racket head is pretty even with the tennis ball, and when it goes towards it, it ends up sliding underneath the ball to the bottom of the ball, which there will pop up the ball. It will make it go too high, and it will make your slice really become a liability. So that's the first thing. I want to get this racket head up here, okay? And I tell people, if you can get the racket head up even with your head, that is going to be your best chance at the slice. Now, how high do you set it? There really is not too high. I could come up here like this and hit the slice if I wanted to. So the higher the better, okay? But make sure that the racket head is at least getting up even with your head. The second thing that I want to think about is the racket head staying above the handle, okay? I want to make sure that it sets in like this. I don't want to bring it up high like this and keep my hand up high as well because then when you go down to the ball, you are also going to go underneath the ball. So we want to get it in more of a vertical situation where the racket head is above the handle. And that does vary sometimes depending on what shot you hit. But all of these things are in general, okay? So I have it back in here like this and I have the racket head up high. Now, how far back do you go? And really, honestly, a really good slice is much further back than probably what you think, especially if you're struggling or just now learning how to hit your slice. I want to bring this racket head so far back that it's almost behind my head. Look at that. So the ball would be coming from your angle, and I'm going to get it way back here like this. Okay? You can almost sometimes see it on the other side of me. That's going to help create this big shoulder turn that I'm trying to hit the slice with. If you notice, when I go to hit the slice, I'm looking over my shoulder to see the ball. That's a huge thing because a lot of people, when they go to slice the ball, they come in just like this. Okay, Their body or their chest faces the tennis court a little bit. Their hands stay off to the side. And though I can hit a slice like that, I can come in and I can slice that ball, it is going to be more likely to rise. And any time that our slice rises up, it becomes a liability for us. We want that ball staying low to the net, very, just skimming right over the top of the net. And when it gets to that other side of the court, that it slides down low, that it does not sit up. So I'm going to accomplish that by bringing this racket up, like I told you, and I'm going to have this big, big shoulder turn. Okay, so now if this is my prep, what else do I need to think about? Well, I got to think about how straight do I keep my arm, okay? If I'm going to come in like this and, you know, I say, oh, well, I got it back here and it's up high, I'm doing great, but look at this bend in the elbow. You see how bent that is? That is not good because what's going to happen is I'm going to use this bend as a hinge when I go to hit. I'm going to go like this, okay, and I'm going to snap it from my elbow. And when I snap it from my elbow, it's going to come in too abrupt. And it's not going to have a smooth motion. It's going to be very quick. And that quickness will throw off the slice. So I don't want to be hinging from the elbow here. Hi there, Jordan Coons. I hope you're enjoying this lesson. If you've made it this far, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Both those things help this channel to grow. Enjoy the rest of the lesson. So how do I correct that? Well, as I bring everything back, I straighten this arm out. Look how straight that is. Now, will it be 100% straight? No. I mean, I'm probably going to get tons of comments uh, below in this video that say, hey, well, you know, Roger comes out with this elbow that's bent in here. Yeah, he's a pro. But when you're learning how to hit a better slice or learning how to hit a slice for the first time, this bend in the elbow 
it becomes a liability. See, what the pros do really well is they pull this racket really far back like this, okay? And they have this bend in here, but the minute that they go to hit the ball, they straighten it out and it moves straight through the shot. Well, at our level, we don't always do that. We leave it bent like this and we end up coming in like this. And that is where the liability happens. So when you're trying to figure this out, you're better off pulling back in here and just go ahead and straighten that out a little bit more. And that will help you use your shoulder. That's where the slice is hit from. It's hit from the shoulder, nothing else. So the shoulder moves out like this, okay? And once you figure that out, that's gonna help you with the slice. What else do we need to think about? Well, we need to think about once we get turned sideways like this and I'm looking over my shoulder and I've got all this set up with somewhat of a straight elbow, I've got to think about, okay, where do I want to contact the ball? Well, contact on the slice is not out here where you may typically hit your regular ball, your, say your topspin shot, right? Hit it out in front of you. And for a one-hander, I'm gonna, that's what I am, a one-hander. I'm gonna be way out here. But a two-hander, you may be back in here somewhere. But nonetheless, it's out in front of your body. Well, when I'm hitting a good slice, I wanna make sure that that ball gets even further back. It gets basically even with my knee. That's where you hit your best slice because now not only can you hit the ball firm through the court, you'll have good extension on the shot, but as you advance the slice, you start to carve on the inside a little bit, you start to hit straight through a little bit, you start to come on the outside a little bit, and so you have some variations to the slice that makes this contact point really important. So look at where contact is. So as I hit this shot, look at how it's even with my knee and sometimes even slightly behind, okay? That's where you're gonna get your best slice. So now that we have the contact point covered, well, now it goes through the hit itself. And I bring my racket back like this. I've got everything set up. I go to hit contact. Now what do I do? Well, what I see happen a lot are players will follow that. So they'll go like this, they'll hit, and then they'll follow with the shoulders and they'll open up a little bit. We do not want to be opening up to the court when we hit a good slice. We want to be staying sideways as much as possible. And there's variations in this because you may be, you know, you find yourself on the defense or the offense or you may be in, you know, in a lot of trouble. So there's some variations. But again, in general, we want to get sideways like this. And as you hit that ball, as I strike this ball, I'm going to stay sideways like this. Notice that my racket has traveled from high to low and look at what my left hand, my non-hitting hand is starting to do. It's starting to separate. That's a big situation when you're hitting the slice is you try to separate at the exact same time, okay? And the more that you can separate, the more that you can use your left arm to go back like this, then the better off you are gonna be on staying sideways. Staying sideways is very difficult when we go to hit a shot. Our body wants to naturally open up with it. But the more that I push this behind me, the more it's going to want to stay like this. And that's really important in hitting the slice. So these are a few of the key concepts, okay? You got to get your racket up here like this. You got to get it head height. You got to make sure that you're turned sideways, but not just sideways. So far sideways that I'm looking over my shoulder to hit the ball. You can start to see the racket on the back side of me. Those are going to be some of your best slices. As I'm sideways like that, I'm learning to straighten my arm. I'm learning to not have a lot of bend in here, okay? The straighter that you can make that and the more that you can keep this quiet, the better off it's going to be. I've got to learn to hit from the shoulder. I need my movement to come from here, okay? So I've turned completely sideways and I'm in like this. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to separate the hands at the exact same time, trying to remain sideways. Now there's a few tricks also in keeping the slice low when it goes across the net because really the slice tendency or the people's tendency with the slice is to pop the ball up. So we're going to try to prevent that. And there's some unconventional things that you can do to fix it, okay? If you're hitting your slice and you're just learning the slice, so you're a new beginner, okay? And you're hitting this slice for the first couple times and that ball will not stop popping up into the air, I want you to change your grip. So typically on a slice, you hold a continental grip, okay? That would be your best slices. And it varies a little bit. You can come a little bit forehand, a little bit backhand. 
But in general, it's, it's right on the Continental. If I'm hitting my Continental, I'm hitting that slice and it keeps popping up and I cannot figure out how to get that ball down, I want you to go ahead and change your grip to more of a backhand, get behind it. So you start to get this knuckle in line with the, the racket itself. That will close this racket face down and now when you do your high to low motion, the ball will stay lower. Now, that being said, I do not want you to stay in that grip, but you gotta figure out how to keep the ball down and the feeling of keeping the ball down. And the more that you do that, the more that you'll start to be able to rotate back to that continental grip, and now you'll be able to hit the continental slice and still keep the ball low. There's another thing that you can do, okay? If I'm popping the ball up and I say, well, I don't wanna change my grip, I, wanna, I really wanna master that continental right now today, well, then what you can do is when you get this racket up high like this, you can hit straight down on the tennis ball. So it's, uh, it's basically like you're trying to hit the ball directly into the ground right in front of you. And when you do that, you bring your racket back through, it's just another way of trying to keep that racket face a little more closed and get that ball to stay a little bit lower to the net and have a deeper slice into the court. And then the third way that you can do it if you don't want to do those two extremes, is that you can simply aim for the net itself. Sometimes we hit a lot of slices or a lot of shots in general, but we forget where we're going. We get so focused on how we're hitting it, we forget the destination that we're trying to get it to. So what I want you to do is I want you to think, okay, I'm going to hit this ball directly into the net. I'm not going to let it go over the net. And typically when you try to do that, that will get that ball a little bit lower and it will show you how to keep the ball down when you're hitting the slice. The slice is a crucial shot because it can handle so many situations. And these are some of the tips that I have for you on trying to improve your slice. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video lesson. Subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'll see you on the next video.